Welcome to Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper. Who remembers the days when the cowboy star was king? When every little boy wanted to be one and a lot of little girls wanted to ride along. Imagine if you called the king of the cowboys dad and the queen of the west mom. Well, in a minute, we're going to meet a lady who called Roy Rogers dad and Dale Evans mom. I'll be right back with Cheryl Rogers Barnett. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm Lynn Harper, and you're watching Inside Southern California. I promised you a cowboy princess, and sitting next to me is the cowboy princess herself, Cheryl Rogers Barnett. <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Lynn. Welcome to Inside Southern California. Oh, thanks for having me. There's so much that I want to ask you, so much everybody wants to know. I hardly know where to begin, but the world of the cowboy star would be a good time. If I were to ask you in a few sentences to describe that world as you knew it. Oh, boy. Um, Dad worked for Republic Studios, which was a Poverty Row studio, one of the little ones. And it was wonderful. They had so many of the top cowboy series stars. You know, at that time, uh, Lash LaRue, or no, not Lash LaRue, but um, Alan Rocky Lane, who was doing some of the Red Rider things, was there. Towards the end, Rex Allen was there. Don Barry was there. Uh, Tom Tyler, I, uh, there were just so many that were on the set and it was fun because I could go from one to another. And I'm the oldest of dads so I spent a lot of time at the studio and it was Disneyland before Disneyland happened. Oh, I can imagine. And yeah. to be number one out of that huge yeah. group of amazing, charismatic, talented men yeah. is amazing. Now, I have some um, tape that I'd like you and everyone to watch. And it begins how, how Roy Rogers became Roy Rogers. Let's yeah. watch it together and then we can talk about it. So let's take a look at Roy Rogers in the beginning. The performer sometimes known as Dick Weston was a singer with a group called the Sons of the Pioneers. He had even played in some Autry movies, fist fighting Gene as a heavy. Drop that gun, Bill. Okay, boys. I didn't intend to use the gun anyway. Sing? Yeah, sing. Yodelay? That's all right. Say, what's this all about? Don't you know? I know we're being arrested for holding up the bus, but I don't get this Yodelay who business. Come on, you find out. Dick Weston was better known around the back lots by his real name, Leonard Sly. Neither Leonard nor anyone else realized that the new stage name he was about to assume would take him to Western glory as Roy Rogers. Leonard Sly was born in Cincinnati and raised on a farm in Duck Run, Ohio. He loved the outdoors and quickly discontinued his idea of becoming a dentist. He never read music, but that never disrupted his genius for it. He was a great musician. Most people don't realize that. And as kids, we didn't realize it so much. With the Sons of the Pioneers, he was the versatile musician. He played the bass. He was the original funny man. But he also played mandolin, banjo, fiddle, guitar, anything with strings the harmonica. He was their utility person and just really, really had an incredible ear. Leonard's big break came in 1938 when he heard that Gene Autry and Republic Studios were having disagreements over money and the studio was looking for a new star in its singing cowboy stable. Dad happened to have his hat being blocked out at a, at a hat store in the valley and a big guy came running in there about the size of John Wayne and said, I got to get hat today. And he said, well, what's going on? He said, well, I'm going out tomorrow. They're going to test at Republic Studios for a new leading man, and I'm going to try out for it. And Dad said, well, when does all this take place? And he said, well, it gave him the time. So Dad said, I saddled my guitar. I went out there. 
And so Dad was like number 18 at this screen test. And of course, he got the job and signed his contract on October the 13th, 1938. Cheryl, that's something. How does it make you feel when you look back at your dad from the time he was young and think about all of your memories? What goes through your mind? You know, we were so lucky that something I, I don't think that other people think about so much, but when you are the child of an actor, you get to see them, and your children and your grandchildren get to see them on screen and see, you know, sort of what they were like and all. I mean, it's a wonderful record to have. Oh, I can imagine. And yeah. Roy was part of a unit that was Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. I remember when I was a little kid, I, I don't remember saying Roy Rogers. It was always Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. Maybe I was one of those little girls who wanted to ride along. I don't know. <laughs> and so we also have some tape on your mom, Dale Evans. And I would love it if you and I could watch that together. So let's look at Dale Evans. Great. Roy's life and career were about to change forever as Herbert Yates, head of Republic Pictures, now decided on something new for a singing Western star. A woman to sing along with him and provide a romantic interest. And he had just what he needed on hand and signed to a contract. She was a feisty, talent-packed dynamo named Dale Evans. Have any trouble? Oh, no, not a bit of trouble. I just run around like this every once in a while to keep cool. She had fought her way up from being an abused, divorced mother at 16 to become a radio star and big band singer. Dad signed at $75 a week in 1938. Well, by 1942, Mom was making $350 a week. She actually got more than John Wayne, who had also been signed to a long-term contract. Mr. Yates was a good businessman. If you'd have kept that pretty little face of yours back in the big city, none of this would have happened. They really proved two and two can be five. You're telling me. What a gorgeous woman and talented performer Dale was. She really was, and she was such a great lady. And this is coming from her stepdaughter. Uh, I was seven and a half when they got married, and bless her, I, she was a saint because I gave her fits. I didn't <laughs> want a stepmother. <laughs> Dad had told me that since I was the oldest, I was in charge of my younger brother and sister, and I loved being in charge. <laughs> oh, well, who wouldn't? But when you watch these tapes, and by the way, I, I saw you on the tape, and the voice belonged to Eli Wallach, so it was nice to, uh, yeah. to have a commentary by Eli Wallach. But being in charge, you were the oldest, and there were yeah. nine kids coming along the the pike, huh? Yes. Well, Mom's son is actually the oldest of us, but he never lived with us. He was already in college when they got married, so he never lived at the house. Well, a lot of people don't realize how many times Roy and Dale were married. Um, let's see, there were, what, six marriages, if you count them all up? Um, Mom was married three times before Dad, and Dad was married uh, well, actually twice, but uh, we didn't realize that until I was like 12 years old or something, and there was one of the gossip sheets was coming out with something. So mom told us that he had been married, but it had been annulled before he married Arlene. So he, nev he never counted it. <laughs> oh, well, you know, when we, uh, we'll take a quick break, because when we come back, we have so many pictures to look at and that way we can really get in much deeper because the question is this what was it like to be the cowboy princess the oldest daughter of Roy and Dale what was it like to actually live that life it's almost like a duo life and we'll look at pictures of the family we'll see pictures of things throughout your life and if you would comment on it that would sure. bring those pictures to life be glad to excellent so I'll tell you what we are going to take a short break and then when we get back we are going to go back in time and actually live the life of the cowboy princess with Cheryl Rogers Barnett. So stay with us. Welcome back. This is Inside Southern California and I'm Lynn Harper here with my guest, the Cowboy Princess, <laughs> Cheryl Rogers Barnett. Are you ever sick of being called the Cowboy Princess? <laughs> but, you know, it's so funny. 
When we were writing the book, the publisher said, you've got to have a working title. And I had just, I'd never thought about it or anything. And so um, I couldn't come up with anything. And we'd been going through a trunk my grandmother had saved with old magazine articles. And there was one in there from when I was like four years old. And the title of the magazine article was The Cowboy Princess. And you said, that's it. And right? no, my husband said, and I said, oh, <laughs> yuck. And he says, don't worry, they'll never use it. They'll make up their own title. And I said, you, you know, you promise. Well, the book came out and it says The Cowboy Princess. Well, we're going to be talking about the book, as a matter of fact, and let everybody know how they can get a copy of the book. But we have pictures. Oh, do we have pictures. And I'm dying to hear your comments on those. So let's take a look at the pictures, Cheryl Rogers Barnett and family. Oh, there's... Yeah, that's Daddy and, and Mommy, Arlene Wilkins that was and myself. That was That was you. taken out in front of my very favorite house that was in Tarzana. And Arlene tragically died in childbirth, I read in your book. She died when Dusty was Dusty. five days old, yeah. Right. Okay, and the next picture, we're going to take a look at it. Oh, who could oh, that that's be? that's Robin. Oh, yeah. that's the, the, the baby only the baby family. that mom and dad had together. She was just a precious little thing. And Robin has a very interesting story, and I'd like to save that for a moment and go on to the next picture. We're going to come back to Robin. Who's this, Cheryl? Well, now that's Dusty, and that's his christening day. That's Roy Jr. And uh, when Mommy died, there were the three of us, myself, I'm adopted, mm -hmm. and then Linda Lou, who is Dad and Arlene's daughter, and Roy Jr., Dad and Arlene's son. So it left Roy with three children, but yes. you knew Dale as an actress working with Roy, there she is here. Right, she started in Dad's films in 1943. It was 1946 that Mommy died. And that's Linda Lou and I with Dale. And um, that's before Mommy died. We're in Dale's dressing room at Republic Studios. And you mentioned that you and Dale, after a while, kind of clashed. Um, and here you are dancing with Roy. What kind of um, relationship? after your mom Arlene died and Dale came into the family did you have well she and I really sort of butted heads um, I was very independent always and I really gave her a hard time and until she got pregnant with Robin then we finally became friends again because before they got married I just adored her I mean she was beautiful and talented one of the few lady stars who didn't mind having a little kid around. She used to let me get in her makeup and all. Oh, and there's the whole family oh my gosh, together. Yes. Did she not mind having kids around? Yeah. Is that everybody? Uh, well, almost everybody. That's the most of us that lived in the house at one time, which was seven of us. Because Debbie is there right in the front right. And, um, and so who... Um, it's a wonderful table that George Montgomery, the actor, made for us. And this is Dale with... Uh, there's you. And, and Dusty, Dusty and, and Sandy. Sandy and Dodie. D uh, Sandy and Dodie had just been adopted. This is after Robin passed away. Uh-huh. And we're obviously at a show of some kind. You can tell by the oh, boys' sure. satin shirts. <laughs> oh, uh, well, now, before we move to the next picture, I just want to make sure we have the children. There was Tommy from Dale's first marriage. Then you were adopted by Roy and Arlene. Linda Lou and Dusty were Roy's and Arlene's children. Then when Arlene passed away um, and Dale joined the family, uh, then came Robin. Right. And then there was Dodie. When when Robin died, and Debbie, uh, Mom adopted Dodie and Sandy. They adopted them at the same time. And then my sister uh, Marion came from Scotland, and she and I are just about the same age. I'm six months older. She came over on a student visa, and we kept her. And then the youngest of us was Debbie Lee, who was Korean and Puerto Rican. Well, we have a large Rogers family, that's for sure. But <laughs> Let's look at the next picture because the Rogers family also Aww. included the co-stars. And this has to be George Gabby Hayes. Yeah, he was one of my favorite people of all time. He was like another grandfather. He and Dad and Mom worked together for several years at Republic. And he'd never had any children. And he sort of adopted me, too. And 
let me comb his beard. Oh, I remember him. Oh my gosh, was he funny. But I understand he's a Shakespearean actor. And now here is uh, Cheryl. Oh, on that's set. the only movie that I made with Dad. That's called Trail of Robin Hood. And that's the makeup man, Steve Drum. He worked with Dad and Mom for years and years. And great character. He was from Romania. He was a, a, really a character. Oh my gosh, I can but, see that. Oh, oh and that's this. from the one half hour that I made. The episode was called Outlaws of Paradise Valley, and Pat was supposed to teach me how to make pancakes. And that's Pat Brady, of that's course. That's Pat Brady. The Jeep Nellie Bell isn't in the shot there. Yeah. And that was the TV show. Yes. Oh, oh who's the little boy? Oh, and that's Don K. Reynolds, Little Brown Chuck. And he was the last of the Little Beavers. He worked with uh, Jim Bannon who was playing Red Rider at that time. And Jug was a little kid stunt man. He was doing stunts when he was seven and eight years old. Oh stuff they, uh, OSHA would never allow a child to do the stuff now that he did then. But he was a great rider, wonderful horseman. Well, you know, there's another family member we have to take a look at. And let's take a look and change that picture to Trigger. <laughs> And that uh, is an interesting inscription. Would you, um, do you remember that? Because that's something strange from your book, and I'd like to ask you about it. Um, my folks were so funny, and I, I don't know if all actors did that or not, but Dad, even in, in photographs to us and things that my husband and I have, he still signs Roy Rogers and Trigger as though I didn't know who it was. I just wondered, I just wondered if you have any pictures signed to Cheryl from Daddy. Um, I think I have one that that's from Dad. But Trigger. Now is that is yeah. that Trigger? Is that you guys on Trigger? Yes, Linda Lou and I. Wow. Do you know how yeah. many kids would give um, an appendage <laughs> to have been able to sit on Trigger? And Trigger was like any time you wanted. Wow. I mean, I'm so yeah. speechless. I'm babbling here because I was one of those little kids. I was one of those who wanted to sit on Trigger. Oh, there's Roy leading. Yeah. Let's see. Is that you on on Trigger? Linda Lou and I. I See, I just can't get yeah. over that. I had to have an extra picture of you guys on Trigger to pretend, ooh, that could be. Every kid wanted to be. And of course, your mom had a horse, Buttermilk. Yes. So that would, but Buttermilk, no offense, Buttermilk, but Trigger was like a person. Oh, that looks like a baby Trigger. Oh, that's my Shetland blondie. Shetlands wow. are a horrible thing that some parents inflict upon their children, thinking that they're doing them a favor. And the problem with Shetlands is that they're so much smarter than the children who are riding <laughs> them, and they're really mean and ornery. <laughs> but I can included this picture, Cheryl, because, I mean, I'm a little girl in my heart, you know, and if I could picture myself in the ideal situation, you're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see, Cheryl growing up, oh, you were so pretty there. Now, oh, what's the deal you. there? Was that a prom? Th no, that was the premiere of King Richard and the Crusaders. And wow. why Mom and Mimi aren't in the picture, I don't know. But uh, somebody got a duo of just Dad and I, and I love the shot. It's it's really a nice shot. So I love that as well. And you know, I book. I read the book, and I think I mentioned to you earlier that I oh. picked a lot of pictures from the book to show everybody. Yeah. I saved this one for last. This is little Robin surrounded by the family. That's her first birthday. And yeah. uh, I think we need to talk a little bit about this because your mother and your family changed the way we view Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. So if you wouldn't mind, maybe we can talk a little bit about how that all came about. Well. Mom mm -hmm. said that, you know, it was a matter of timing. The Humphreys, uh, Hubert Humphrey and his wife, had a granddaughter who had a problem. And then the Kennedy family had a daughter who had problems. And so Mom said that it was, you know, all of them. But I've talked to so many people who are professionals in the world of, uh, Down syndrome and special children. Sure. And they really say it was mom and her book, Angel Unaware. Right, Angel Unaware. But what Dale did is she and Roy and the family brought Robin home and loved her. She only lived a couple of years. Yes. But when people saw that, they then began to change their perspective. And today, we have Down syndrome children happily integrated into society. But you know, as time will pass, uh, Roy and Dale, who were always young, um, began to 
uh, go into the future. Yeah. And I have a little special tape that I'm going to show everybody now, Cheryl. And, and I love this tape, so I'd like everyone to take a look. Roy and Dale in their later years. Near the century's close, a long ticking clock was running down. Roy and Dale Rogers had seemed likely to go on forever. They wrote and recorded countless hit songs. There was hardly a circus or rodeo in the country when they didn't turn up. Until Roy passed on in July of 1998. The night before, we were all sitting around watching some of the old movies. You know, he loved watching the old movies because he says, and he said, he says, look at that movie. He says, I can't believe it. Everybody's in that movie's dead but me. <laughs> And that night, he, he said, uh, well, Lord, it's been a long, hard ride, and took his last breath. That was really beautiful. I'd like to take a break just so I can think about what we just saw. So let me take a break, and we will be right back with Cheryl Rogers Barnett. Welcome back. You're watching Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper, and this is the book that Cheryl Rogers Barnett and I were talking about, Cowboy Princess. Cheryl, I loved reading this book. Oh, thank you. And these pictures brought everything alive. Anyone can get this book by going to your website. Yes. CherylRogers.com. Yep. And uh, I nice got and another one for a friend of mine, actually. I got mine on eBay, so I mean, there's any number of ways, but would you autograph the ones they get from you? Oh, I would be delighted. This is such a great book. Yeah. I wish we had another half hour to go through. There's pictures, some of the pictures you saw, some of the ones you didn't, the whole entire Growing Up Rogers story. But there's another yeah. book that you gave me that I adore. This one, The All-American Cowboy Grill. <laughs> oh, and this is uh, available wherever books are sold. Right? Yes. And, your of course, also. on my website, I'll be glad to send them an autographed copy. Uh, it's such fun. A couple of hundred cowboys. We asked them for their favorite recipes, so it was really fun. But you know, with Cowboy Princess, Mom was the writer. I didn't think that I had a book in me, and I've been so gratified by the way that people have received it. I mean, I was overwhelmed when the reviews first came out, and I just recorded it. An audio version is coming out, and they asked me to record it, which I was delighted oh, perfect. with. Perfect. And then we just optioned it to have a screenplay done based on it uh, on the chapters about mom. It's actually the, the Dale Evans story that they're developing, and I can't wait to see, you know. And you'll probably what be an advisor on with. the film. Yes. You should, definitely should be. That's going to yes. be wonderful. And your wonderful husband, Larry. Yeah. Um, too yes. bad he couldn't be with us today, I but you have a happy life, children, grandchildren? Yes, 14 grandchildren. Fourteen. Lots of grandchildren. Yes. Wow. Well, we have seven children between us. So. Wow. Yeah. So the cowboy princess has um, the dynasty continues. <laughs> yes. I, the, well, the Rogers family. I mean, we just keep multiplying, and, <laughs> and and now the grandchildren are having children. So it keeps going. I know that you know, mom and dad would be so pleased. And I'm just so pleased that you were able to come here at Inside Southern California. It means a lot to everybody watching. And um, we'll just keep track of you, Cowboy Princess, and the uh, All-American Cowboy Grill. <laughs> Thank you all for watching as well. We'll see you again soon. This is Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.